July 20th, 2022. On this, the 53rd anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the surface of the moon, a new mission is about to launch from Launch Pad 39A at Cape Canaveral, unlike any that has been launched before with a unique mission. This mission will be to take humans to the surface of Mars. On the dock today is a spacecraft known as the Big Falcon rocket with a spaceship on top. The spaceship is connected in a cargo configuration. On board, it contains a solar panel sufficient to provide 150 kilowatts of electricity on the surface of Mars. It contains a total of 12 rovers, 10 of identical design similar to the Mars 20, ro 20 rover. These have been provided with, uh, with a connection of many companies. Tesla has provided the frame similar to their Model Y. This frame will allow it to go from place to place without any issues. They've also provided the solar panels. SpaceX has provided the electronics that are safe in the radioactive environment on the surface of Mars. They've also helped to ensure that all of the dust standards are met. NASA has provided free of charge to SpaceX all of the instrumentation on board these 10 spacecraft. They contain a similar suite of instruments to the Mars 2020 rover. They contain a chemical laser to identify where samples are, a number of cameras both for navigation and visual recognition. The purpose of these rovers will be to find materials suitable to building a habitat on the surface of Mars. Specifically, they are looking for water. NASA has much experience searching for water. They have agreed to do this in a partnership with SpaceX, with the return that SpaceX provides the science that they receive. And this is a win-win for both groups, both organizations. The other two are a little bit more unique. One is a construction robot built on the frame of a Model Y. This will be able to construct the solar panels on the surface of Mars. It will also be able to connect the wires and do other basic type of maintenance at the base site. It's not intended to travel very far. The other, also built on the frame of a Model Y, will be a boring drill, boring company drill. This drill will be used to test some of the building of habitats. Now this big Falcon chip has an identical payload to the one that will be launched in a few days. However, this one will go first. They've decided to do an identical payload on both rockets just in case something should happen to one of them. Both of them will have everything necessary in order to ensure mission success. They also contain on board a number of weather balloons. These weather balloons will be launched prior to a future human landing on the surface of Mars. This information will allow them to do a more precise landing. They'll understand exactly what the atmosphere on the surface of Mars is doing at that day. The atmospheric pressure can vary from day to day, and thus having an accurate model will really help them to improve the landing accuracy on the surface of the red planet. This launch launches without a hitch. However, it's not ready to go to Mars yet. It's launched into a low Earth orbit, and its fuel tanks are almost empty. In order for it to launch successfully to Mars, another five launches will be required of a tanker mission. This tanker ship is already prepared, set to launch the next day to carry the fuel required to get this into orbit. It uses the same booster stage that was launched to use the initial one. SpaceX has become confident in their reuse of the booster such that they can do it within 24 hours and they're quite sure that this will work. They quickly refurbish the booster, get it ready, certified for launch, and for the next week they launch five different launches in order to refuel it. A storm had passed through during these couple of days that would not allow them to launch and SpaceX engineers are trying to figure out ways to improve this. But finally, on July 27th, it takes off towards the Red Planet. On July 30th, the second spacecraft, with a similar payload to the previous one, is set to launch and launches again without any issues. It again takes about a week for it to receive all of the fuel required for it to finally make that journey. 
and on August 6th, it takes off to Mars. Again, without any issues. <clears throat> this is not all that is required, however. In addition, two Falcon Heavy missions are set to support this mission. Each of them carries, again, identical payloads. Seven different satellites. Six of them are very heavily based off of the Starlink design of satellites. However, they contain slightly larger solar panels and larger fuel tanks, which will allow them to orbit the surface of Mars in order to provide communications for an upcoming mission. These will enter into slightly different planes, but they will allow quick communication and eventually they will be aerobraked into a low orbit. They will also provide some visual imagery in order to help assist with the mission to Mars. The seventh satellite on board each of these is a much larger satellite, an aerosynchronous communication satellite. These satellites will be positioned at approximately the same longitude of the launch to Mars. They will there be able to provide constant communication. The primary communication link from Mars to Earth for all of these missions, including the rovers, the Big Falcon rockets that are on the surface of Mars, and each of the communication satellites will be to go through that spacecraft and from there back to Earth. When the Starlink designs are closer to the surface of Mars, they will be the primary communication link relaying to these aerosynchronous orbit satellites in order to provide the highest data link possible. The aerosynchronous satellites will communicate primarily with laser to Earth. This has been accomplished via the Starlink constellation of satellites that SpaceX has in orbit around Earth. Each of these has been built with the ability to receive laser signals from the surface of Mars and to return the signal. This will allow a constant communication of laser signals, which will be a much, much higher bandwidth. And thus, this mission is expected to return far more data than all previous missions to Mars combined. In fact, if all goes well, they might even be able to send some real-time video from the surface of Mars, something that has been unforetold. These missions, Falcon Heavy, launch using two different center core stages and the same two side boosters. They each have their own second stage and fairings. These launches happen on August 8th and August 10th. They spread one day apart because the weather on August 9th was not sufficient for them to actually launch. However, they could have managed to do this in the 24-hour turnaround had it been deemed necessary. Both of the cores have been landed on a drone ship that is out in the middle of the ocean on two separate drone ships. Currently, SpaceX is tracking a total of 16 spacecraft heading towards Mars. This vast flotilla will greatly expand our knowledge on Mars. However, they are there primarily to help with the human aspects of getting there. Still, they will provide some data. The aerosynchronous satellites have weather cameras which will allow them to get a better sense of the weather, at least on the half of Mars that they will see. They also will help, the Starlink satellites will also have a high resolution camera that can help to image the surface of Mars at a higher resolution than is currently done which is at about a six meter resolution, they'll be able to image the surface of Mars at about a three meter resolution and do so in only a matter of a year or so. This flotilla of spacecraft comes to Mars and unfortunately two of the Starlink design of satellites has failed on the journey there. I'm not quite sure what happened, but it seems like they have learned some lessons and will be able to redesign future spacecraft to prevent these issues. But otherwise, everything goes flawless. Interestingly enough, by orbital dynamics, the first mission to launch there will actually be the last one to arrive at the surface of Mars. Thus, the communication satellites arrive first. Each one of them carefully positions itself into the orbit, and they are able to successfully orbit. However, it seems like the aerobraking is a little bit slower than they would desire. The second launch, Big Falcon ship, arrives then on the surface of Mars. 
it enters the surface of Mars similar to a skydiver, belly first, trying to keep its big size in the direction of motion for as long as possible in order to slow it down as much as possible. By so doing, it is able to remove 99% of its kinetic energy. This is sufficient, and it does this without any issue. However, it's been uh, drifted a little bit off course. It's about 20 kilometers away from where it was expected to land. The landing ellipse was hoped to be only a couple of kilometers, so this is a major concern. However, it still has a safe area to land and is able to turn around, land booster first, and land on the surface of Mars with no further issues. It can still continue its science objectives and its human objectives. However, they have to determine quickly what it was that caused the issue. Within two days, they are able to have determined that the atmosphere of Mars was slightly thinner than they had thought it would be according to their models. And by updating the model and the other BFR, they are able to land that one within just 50 meters of its correct intended location. <clears throat> These missions begin to deploy their drones. First, they deploy the so science drones that are pr currently placed inside of the compartments near the engines. Each one of these drones goes and goes off into different directions. Each of them is trying to observe the, the materials in the present. Specifically, they're tasked to look for water. They're going to look for any kind of regolith that might be there in the area as well. Next comes the other drones that are on the surface of Mars. These continue. First, the construction robot is deployed to the surface of Mars. And then each of the solar panels, carefully, load by load, is lowered by crane to Mars. And from there, it is installed in the proper place for it to gather power. On board each Big Falcon spacecraft is life support equipment tests. The primary purpose of these tests will be to ensure that the spacecraft can convert the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of Mars to breathable oxygen, which can also be used for the rocket fuel. However, these will require much power, and so that is the purpose of deploying these solar panels. They are carefully deployed, and with a, a enough time, all of them connected together, some slight damage has been found in some of them, and hopefully this will be improved with the future missions. But they are all connected up to the spacecraft. Each spacecraft then has its power. The next journey the missions to Mars, the rovers, continue looking. Now, unlike some previous rovers to Mars, theirs are not going to stop at significant periods of time for interesting rocks. Their primary purpose is to go as far as they can. These rely on solar panel power, unlike the nuclear power, because the Big Falcon rocket has yet to be certified to carry nuclear payloads. However, it's hoped that this mission success will allow the future human missions to carry the nuclear payloads that are required in order to make deep space exploration truly possible. These continue around. Many of them find evidence of water. In fact, some of them find some solid ice. This ice is then marked for future missions that can be converted into rocket fuel. The last instrument of rovers on board, the boring instruments are the last things to come off of the spacecraft. These land on the surface of Mars and start to dig holes to test future habitats. Thank you much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.